A very good evening and welcome to this edition of the Fourth Estate. Charles Mongu Shampagi and tonight a panel of journalists and media practitioners to analyze the issues that are going on. And the question we'll be asking tonight, will bread and butter issues make the 2016 campaign? Over the last few weeks since the launch of the campaign, we're talking about the crowds and the excitement that have been uh, caused by that. And uh, we're also talking about how the media has responded. Is it time to begin focusing on bread and butter issues? To introduce in studio tonight, was missing last week, Ona Peter Ekomoloid. Very nice to have you. Thank you, Charles. Good evening. Ona Peter is Corporate Affairs Director of Nile Breweries, S.A.B. Miller. Okelo Peter Jabwili. Very nice to have you once again. Thanks, Charles. And uh, he's a journalist, he's a lawyer, and he's very many things. Worked at the Electoral Commission, worked at the New Vision before, and now I think he's, uh, yes, he's been a consultant, now moving more into, I think, the legal, legal practice. True. Very nice to have you. Thanks. And a man a lot of our people know as uh, uh, one of the major social commentators. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's a proper description of Frank Gashumba. Frank, very nice to have you. Me too. At some point, you are supposed to run for president. What happened? Uh, we are putting <laughs> up in the infrastructure. You <laughs> <laughs> did the same way by Gala. No way, no way. He put his behind <laughs> somebody. <laughs> somebody might argue he was uh, running the campaign on Facebook. Yeah, okay. sure. Earlier today, we watched or witnessed the launch of the third manifesto. I, I think this is the third launch of a manifesto, which is uh, the manifesto of uh, the Go Forward team the one of uh, John Patrick Amama Mbabazi, which was launched just behind us uh, here at the Serena International Conference Center. Uh, we'll be discussing a few of the issues that Amama Mbabazi is trying to put forward as uh, his, the, the main standpoints for his campaign. We, of course, saw the launch of the National Resistance Movement Manifesto uh, of candidate Yori Museveni, and the other manifesto that we know of officially now is the manifesto of... Uh, uh, Venantius Bariamreva, Professor Venantius Bariamreva, also launched his manifesto. We'll be waiting for the manifestos of uh, the Forum for Democratic Change candidate, Dr. Kiza Besige. But the FDC says it's going to transform its party platform, which was launched only a few months ago, into the party manifesto. Because they say there is no need to, d to generate another document and present it to Ugandan when you already have a document, a working document, that's supposed to run the party, if it gets into power over the next uh, five or, f or, or so years. Uh, of course, uh, Chalia and uh, Mavirizi, Maureen Chalia and uh, Joseph <laughs> Mavirizi, as well as uh, former, uh, I mean, General Benon Beraro, will be waiting to see what they come up with. Let me start with you, Frank Gashumba. You've been watching these candidates. Mm -hmm. You've been commentating mm -hmm. uh, about them. Mm -hmm. Do you think the time to focus on bread and butter issues is now uh, at this stage of the campaign since they launched? Huh, I don't think so. You know, I think we are seeing another 206 elections. 206, it was a very tough election between President Yoweri Museven and, uh, and uh, Dr. Kiza Vesiji. What I'm seeing now is uh, the president, he's all over in the north. Uh, he spent the last week in uh, West Nile. And I hear he has had over 40 campaigns. Mm. Yeah, 40 rallies. And I believe because he has the state facilities, the choppers and the rest, uh, the former Prime Minister is also doing well, based on the crowds. When you look at Dr. Kiza Vesiji, his strategy is very simple. We should go deep to the villages, mm. because he's assured of the, of the urban areas, towns and the rest. About bread and butter, I think there is something uh, leaders should tell, should tell voters. Unfortunately, I think voters, when you tell them the truth, they will hate you. When you tell them a good lie, they will say this is the best candidate we should vote for. I heard the president telling our sisters that uh, if he's elected in 2016, he's going to provide them with, with... I don't even want to mention it on radio, but sorry, on TV, unfortunately. Uh, the sanitary towers is not a bad word. There's nothing, embarrassing there's nothing about bad about, uh, embarrassing about... It depends uh, where you mm, come from. Where mm. I come from, it's, you cannot even dare say it in public. Because I don't recall Charles ever knowing that your sister, she's on those days using them. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 not, it's unbelievable. Do you know why he's doing it? Mm -hmm. He knows it very well that when people are, are broke, you can do anything with them. Now, I think on Friday, he told us that he's going to provide hose. And actually, there's a letter that has been circulating on the social media, instructing the Prime Minister to make sure that in the next year's budget, 
He provides hose for the people in, is it in the West Nile? 30 years in power. Hose. There is no country that has ever developed using hose. Never. Mm. And for you viewers of NTV, when the president instructs the prime minister that 2016, it's as if he's sure that he's coming back. Mm. To me, not bread and butter to me. I want these politicians, these... Well, well uh, Museven has promised hose. He has promised sanitary towels for girls because... I think there's a validity in the argument that he makes because uh, a lot of uh, young girls are dropping out of school mm -hmm. when they get to that stage in their life. Mm -hmm. And to keep them in school, you need to help them deal with the embarrassment that comes with that. So I, 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 I want to imagine that uh, that promise has been made in that light. No, 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 it's very wrong. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Why would Museveni give sanitary pads to my children? Why would Museveni give hose to my uncle? The answer is very simple. He has made sure that Ugandans are too broke. They cannot even afford to buy a home. Uh, Ghana, I, I, I want to pass that on to you. <laughs> I, I, I think that's a, a fundamental <laughs> argument that is rising. Do, do you think the time to raise bread and butter issues is now? And when the, the, the candidates begin making these promises, I, I think every, every candidate has made one promise or the other or over the last um, about 14 days of their campaign so far. Look, Charles, every election should essentially be about bread and butter issues. But unfortunately, the, at the end of the day, most of our people will take decisions not based on bread and butter issues because they have essentially lost faith in the ability of the government to solve bread and butter issues. We don't have a welfare state in this country. We don't have uh, an economy where uh, most people's livelihoods are dependent on government decisions. We are having a largely peasant uh, economy where most people are earning from the land. So the average person's uh, welfare is not so much impacted by government. So even when politicians make promises, people know that it's really talk. So the real issues that is having elections are emotional issues. Mm. That's why many leaders have been talking about issues of traditional leaders when they go to, to Central, they want to make sure they appease the Kabaka sheep. When they go to the West, they look those other traditional leaderships. Mm. You, you, you're, looking like you're looking at the lineup of, that was behind <laughs> us from Mango. Uh, These are the issues Mango. that are emotional. Mm. But look, where bread and butter issues become critical in these elections is generally in terms of segregating the three top contenders whereby uh, the president and Imbabazi represent sort of the, their large constituency is the, the hubs, you know, the people who want the status quo to continue. And that's the challenge for the president that he and Imbabazi sort of are both going to appeal to those people. And basically just takes his claim to fame on representing the have-nots. Mm. The people who have nothing to lose. The, the way he presents it is I, I, I thought Museven is the one who has presented himself as a president, no, president I, I of Peasants. No, he may present himself as the president of the Peasants, but in reality, right now, the biggest assurance for the president are people who feel over the last 30 years they have got something, mm. and they don't want to rock the boat. That is the group the president can count on, and I think Mbaba also wants to encroach on that group by assuring it of what he calls a peaceful transition. But basically, his group is really... They have not. The people who, have, who, are, who see themselves as they have gained nothing out of this, and they, he says we shall clean out the old slate and start afresh. I, I have seen uh, previously uh, uh, John Nagenda, uh, senior presidential advisor, referring to them as uh, the unwashed of the slum. Jabweli, <laughs> 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 uh, yes. uh, uh, these two gentlemen raise the different constituencies that the candidates are appealing to. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to get into the rhetoric of what you can do. But as Frank says, 30 years in power, you want to drive this country supposed to be middle income in the next two years? Uh, no, actually, the next one year. Uh, when you g get done with 2016, 2017, we are supposed to be a middle income country, according to the National Development Plan and Vision 2040. And you're talking about handholds? Handholds appeared in uh, a budget, I think, Maria Chuanka's uh, first budget was talking about purchasing hand holes mm -hmm. towards th that should have been either 2009 2009-2010 yes uh, that, uh, that, that uh, or 2010 2011 that budget was talking about hand holes and people are saying you cannot even purchase those hand holes from a factory in ginger you're going to import them from china and, and you're talking about hand holes and you think there is space to discuss um, bread and butter issues for ugandan 
Yes, thank you, Charles. First of all, I want to agree with, with, with Ona that uh, in Uganda, unlike even Kenya to some extent or Zambia, these countries that where the people depend on a staple crop and, you know, either partial or and if some mismanagement happens, then there is mass famine or people begin to, to, to suffer. In Uganda, majority of the people live on their own. Actually, they live in spite of the state, not because the state is, pro, is giving them a, a, a anything. You and myself and all of us here, uh, if you go back to your villages, if you look back, you are some sort of, uh, you are a, a government of sorts. You provide for so many people. Mm. Services that ordinarily should be provided by the government. If a relative falls sick, they should be able to walk to the, the health center. Yeah. If uh, they need fees, they should, there should be a bursary. Or some, the local governments, even in the 60s, used to provide that. A lot of the people who are in government now who are old and they, they studied based on local government scholarships and so on. Things that the state should do are not being done. And so people have become, as Zona says, they don't expect much from the politicians. That's why there is the issue of money. If you can pay me now, <laughs> I'm better off getting what you, you give me and you go so that you also sort out yourself. We'll meet again in five years. <laughs> that's the, that's the in cynical thing. You, you, you shake, you shake so, the mango so tree. The, the, <laughs> the question of the handhold, again, to, I think to be fair to the, to the president, the candidate, NRM candidate who made that, I think it came from the, in one of the places he went, um, the people asked for. But and he was it. taken aback. He said, you mean you need hose? And so, uh, yes, they said, yeah, that's what we need. If you give us that, we shall. And the other thing... That, doesn't that, that, that surprise you? Yes. Because you've been president for 30 years. Yes. You are the most traveled president because you have had the most consistent stay in power. You have had opportunity, multiple opportunities. You see, uh, Ona, you worked with the president. Charles, mm. Why should the president be getting surprised? in 2015 that people in West Nile need well, well, to do that. Just, 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 just before that comes, comes in, yes. the, the issue is, I've noted especially with the candidate of NRM, the president, he's literally rewriting or writing his manifesto as he moves. On the train, where he goes. Yeah, based on what the, the demands of the people. So, I don't know, in 30 years, he's been trying to talk of commercialization but, but, of agriculture, but, but, but at the same trying time, to, to consolidate land, for example, in, in northern Uganda, so that you have commercial agriculture and so on. It's a contradiction in terms to be talking of hoes, but when, if politics is about votes, if it's faced with the demand of the people that we need, that's what we need. No, but, uh, but, but Charles, why, why would the president get surprised? Yes. Of course the but president wait. is partly... A victim of, uh, I mean, what have I mean, it's a decadent public service delivery. You have all these agricultural programs like NADS and uh, everything else, the modernization of agriculture. Tandy the what? president, on paper, government has done stuff. But in reality, these programs have not delivered. So this is just a reality check for him that when he comes back, or if, when he comes back to power as his confident and his supporters are, this approach of thinking that these government systems can work, it's not working. But, Even but if you give it another 30 years, the delivery systems of the ministries is not working. Something, even if you gave this regime a thousand years, there's nothing new they're going to do. <laughs> no, but the, 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 let the, me give an example. No, no, the, the, Frank, the white Frank, came to, to Africa. Frank, just hold it. Mm. Hold, hold it a moment there. Mm. The question is, is, why are you the elite? not able to d redirect the campaign that's what we're doing here on these fundamental issues that's what we're doing Question. here yes let me tell you hey, i think it was 1877 that's when the whites came to, to uganda they found baganda using those holes they left uganda in 1962 the same holes 30 years in power several one is telling us 53 years of independence oh my god oh my god it's impossible and my brother tells me that voters requested for them leaders take painful decisions that will empower their country. No, but he also told you that the president seems to be writing his manifesto or amending it as he moves it's on the campaign. Side. But uh, that isn't, is that, that, isn't that true for all the other cam candidates? No, I think, uh, for example, the, the FBC candidate, for him, he has a very clear message. I think they, are, they, 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 they summarized it into three, three things mm. the message of defiance message of liberation, 
the, the, client client is in, not, in, the client is not one of the three. In, in, in he, between, he talked about, in between he's there, about, he... he's talked about liberation, mm -hmm. yeah. he's talked about uh, transformation, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a third issue. I'll, I'll pick it up after a short commercial break. We'll be right back. You're still watching the fourth estate, and we're discussing. In 2016, will bread and butter issues come to the fore now that we have gone beyond the excitement of who is pulling the biggest crowds where because every candidate seems to be, somehow be able to pull the crowd? Um, Amama Mbaba has launched his campaign earlier today, and uh, it's, uh, he says it's a new dawn, a new dawn is upon us. And he has uh, broadly eight points. If you look at this image, Honor, uh, th th this looks like um, a very nice, um, the, the, the lands, I don't know if this is a Ugandan picture. Oh, it's a nice picture for Uganda. If you gentlemen can have a look at that, of um, and and I see officially in his manifesto now. I mean, in his manifesto, he <coughs> claims the TDA flag here. The, the, that the TDA is uh, with, together with Go Forward. He really he did earlier release an eight-point agenda mm -hmm. when he announced his candidature, which he has now developed into this manifesto, sixty-six pages of it, and it says. Uh, reviving good governance, democracy, and, de and rebuilding our institutions. And it starts by talking about, uh, among the other issues, transforming our economy, agriculture, how to grow out of poverty. He talks about warehouse receipting systems with storage silos, post harvest handling losses, um, uh, skills development for farmers, mechanization of agriculture, conservation, and boosting our fisheries resources. He talks about advanced subcounter level model, uh, an agricultural commodity exchange, talks about energy, uh, a residential grid tied solar power, oil and minerals, jobs for all. He talks about um, enhancing social services, transportation, very many other interesting things. The question is, the things written in the manifesto mm. and the discussion that goes on on the trail mm. and the delivery of a government. If we step back, Charles, plan for actually, modernization actually, of agriculture yes. was a campaign promise that starts uh, a little bit about 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, modernization of the army, transformation of agriculture, uh, no, professionalization of the army, modernization of agriculture, transformation. 2006, 2011, now 2016. 2011, President Yuri Museveni, who was at that time still with Amama Mbabazi, campaigned like an opposition candidate. Picked all these NADS coordinators in the district, embarrassed them, embarrassed them on the podium, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and blamed them for everything that had gone wrong. 2016, President Museveni is standing and saying, ah, Horse. <laughs> we should buy a horse. I, if you look at this, what Amama Mbaba is promising, you have listened to Beseje. He has the three key issues. Mm. He thinks the country needs to be liberated first. Once you have liberated it, then you reform. I, 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 you, you reform mm -hmm. the country and then lead to transformation. Mm. Yes. I think those are the three core issues that he's talking about. Yeah. But on the campaign trail, he's been talking about other things, practical things that he thinks he can do. Mm. Was in Kanungu, pushed the car and said, We'll fix this road. We should have fixed it a long time ago. Mm. President Museven talks about some uh, certain things. Uh, basically, talks about paying teachers better, paying uh, police, uh, officers. police officers better, mm -hmm. prisons officers. The same language. Charles, yeah. mm -hmm. And that is the point. Same language. And with all due respect and with all fairness, these candidates are actually articulating what most Ugandans agree are the problems. You know? To me, the problem, I mean, the, the real crisis then is the how, you know? What Amama Mbabazi has stated today, mm. and the president has indicated, is not different from what they have been doing while he was prime minister, while he was all those other positions. And why didn't it work? Mm -hmm. That's what he should be telling the country. Why didn't it work? My argument is straightforward. It did not work because the machinery for delivering the these wheeling. things cannot <laughs> deliver. Mm -hmm. I am a very firm believer, not just in Besige's idea of tinkering with the government, but actually removing much of the government as we know it. And if the president wants to deliver holes or tractors, it won't happen through the current Minister of Agriculture. No, that's right. It can the, only the, happen the, through the, the somebody whom you can hold to a contract mm. to deliver and pay. And to me, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. Yes. Remove the bureaucracy, and I am not here in a kind honor, of saying you, uh, that of the bureaucracy us, is not working. No, you have worked, of all of us, you have worked closest to the president for yes. some time. Mm. Of all of us here, you and uh, mm. Jabweli have mm. worked for government. Yes. The rest of us haven't. Yes. The restructuring government. 1991? Forget about Retrenchment? that. Retrenchment? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no
much of government should go to private hands that can be held accountable mm -hmm. based on a contract, based on delivery. Not this obscure really. something. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yes. And the question people will raise yeah. is, what happened to privatization? That, that is still tinkering with yes. the system as it is. It's not, <laughs> to me, it's not to me, widespread me, enough. No? He worked with the president for many years. No? Five, ten years? I don't Please, know. I was talking to the no, president. No, no, no. You worked for him for hours. Okay. No, no, no. I'm scared to deliver. He was the chief strategist. No, he wasn't. No. I think he was the official spokesperson. He, yes. He, he, but he was not, the, not the, in the Minister of Agriculture. <laughs> no. Uh, on a piece of for clarity, Papa said, was the presidential press secretary to the president mm. and he did not work for him for ten years. Mm. It for was much less. For five years. Five years. So they were breathing the same air every day. Yes. Let me tell you. Many Ugandans look at President Yuri Museveni, but they don't know him. They just don't know him. Museveni simply doesn't care about you. Simple. The day Ugandans realize that this man doesn't care about them, mm -hmm. they liberate themselves. That's why I agree with Dr. Vesiji. We Frank, need... We Frank, need sorry. Let, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. A man okay. who has the wish to risk his we life are, cannot be... We are in a not, he risks his life, he cares for Ugandans. You have you not, <laughs> not listened to his recent video? Mm -hmm. He fought for... He Frank, said... He was is, this about, is this discussion about... President Museveni, or is it about the issues being mm. presented to you By the on the basis of I'm which building, you can make a decision? I was building my yes. point. If you tell my brothers in the West, in, in, the, in the West Nile, that I'm going to give you a horse, to me you are disempowering them. There is no country all over the planet that will give horse to peasants. Is, is Amama Mbabazi in his manifesto launched earlier today? Mm. Offering a better alternative. I'm coming. I'm is coming. I'm not ready. Offering a better alternative. I'm not ready. Is uh, is uh, is Maureen Charlie mm. presenting a better alternative? Is uh, Mavirizi, Doctor Wanika, uh, Benon Veraro? Are they presenting Charlie, let me ask better you, You've been in the media houses for many years. Yes. Every after five years, there is a new slogan. In Tandikwa, Bonaba Gagawali, prosperity for all. Now there is operation. What is the what? Creation. Creation. Every after five years, there is a new name. How do we get votes from voters? We should come out with something sweet that we listen to. Every after five years, something sweet, new lies, that's it. So my message is very simple. You the voters, simple. Listen to them. Exactly. Listen to them. So, so why don't you help them analyze? Uh, Jabel, that's why I'm here. Jabel, come in. Yes. I, I, I want to take on from what Ona was saying. Uh, the issue, Ona obviously coming from the private sector now and seeing how the private sector works. Mm. He's so sold into the private sector and the, <laughs> as a financier to the problems <laughs> and that. But I think we need to investigate that a little closer. Mm. Yes, let's because we also have uh, experiences mm. with the private sector, the so-called mm. private sector in this country. Yes. Actually, what you call private, what passes for private sector is actually guys who have hijacked the state, who then open private companies, mm -hmm. fused with Proxy. the state, and do the same kind of thing. And that's not the private sector I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, and for me, when I talk about private sector, it shouldn't be limited to Ugandan companies. It should even involve international companies. That's, 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 that's the yes. movement. The people who have conned us, who have done shoddy work here, talk of all the roads, the scandals and what, these are supposedly companies from outside of Uganda, but with local no, 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 these are dubious yeah. companies. So, see, yeah, no, so we yeah. need... And, also but we also know serious also companies, international yes, companies that are delivering. Gentlemen, in order to be fair also. Yes, because, I can ask my brother. Yes, just wait a moment, Frank. Uh, let him yes. finish his point. Mm. Because again, if we went private, as Ona is saying, then you know with the private sector, then the, the numbers, the, the question of efficiency will come in. But mm. we are talking about unemployment. We are talking about mm. swelling numbers of youth. Mm. Uh, so part of why I think the state is the way it is structured is to try and absorb. There are so many people hanging on in jobs. Yes. But doing nothing. And, and, and let me ask this question. I, I, I was at an event uh, the other day, I think on Friday, with uh, Siatini. Siatini does tracking of uh, taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they are leading, I think, on the negotiations with the uh, uh, WTO mm -hmm. uh, and, and how we fit in. Mm -hmm. And we're having an argument with, uh, I think, Ambassador Irumba, retired Ambassador Irumba, and uh, Mwambu Sendeveso. When you privatize here, some of the private entities Mm -hmm. doing business in Uganda are actually public enterprises in other countries. Mm -hmm. And then the other question is... Look, look, you, there's no just, contradiction. Just a moment, just a moment, look, just a moment. I know where you're just going. What moment. I'm saying... Can I, can I put the you question? You can even have a, a public entity, but its management must 
be done in a and, and the question manner. and the and question I want to put vested interest yes in the and the question I want to put to your honor after almost 30 years of subs mm. structural adjustments programs mm. after 30 years of uh, privatization a process that you must uh, to, 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 to cut some slack to President Museven and the NRM started with the UPC government mm. 1981 to 1985 mm -hmm. that's where you start if we are going we are running in these elections and we supposed to be auditing government on the basis of how it has performed on the privatization enterprise mm -hmm. <coughs> and question, ask the question what then is the role of government well at the risk of blowing a trumpet of a company i work for it was once in public hands but i know now it's a private company and you can't fault it in terms of delivery but that's maybe a wrong example because i have a vested interest mm. no, it's okay. so, so yeah, look, I, 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 I don't want to grounded. go by the, the privatization which you have said, which is underhand. My, my concept is really so far-reaching. I don't want a ministry, first of all, to exist. You can't have a yeah. ministry of agriculture alongside a private company to deliver agricultural services. Mm -hmm. The two cannot, because you have the same bureaucrats trying to interfere with the efficiency of the private entity. So what then is the role so of the So remove the ministry, all the money you are wasting on the overheads, on the so travel, offices... Okay. Let that money be doing the actual work, and, and the buying roads, buying tractors, which you need to. And, to and the question, the and the question then oh, is, okay. and, and the question <laughs> then is, that mm -hmm. be that as it may, who of the eight contenders? I know you have categorized them in mm -hmm. two groups. There are three leading uh, front runners, and then there are five others mm -hmm. who are also in the chase, in the chasing pack. Of them, of all of them, given what they have presented to us so far, either in written manifestos or in what they have said on the campaign trail, mm. or on their track record. Who is in the best position to lead a government that is going to run on your model, but actually deliver for you? Unfortunately, none of them is going to do it because they don't believe in it. It will be someone. <laughs> what does that mean? So, 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 yes. so we are having the... <laughs> so to, to, for you, you, you believe that it's only the private sector that can do a good job? Absolutely. There are, there are countries that are, that, that are running institutions that are doing well. Well, I don't want to live in another country. Uh -huh. We're in Uganda. And they're doing it well. They're doing it well. No, my question, yeah. gentlemen, I think, I think we're digressing a little. Yes. The question is, mm. we audit the eight candidates. Mm -hmm. yes. It doesn't matter which model a candidate is presenting yes. to mm. voters. Mm. Who of these candidates is presenting a model that works and who has the capacity actually to live up to Charles, it? Charles, yes. let me come in at that point. Because mm. I think we need to guide the, the viewers out there. Because, for example, we have a candidate... Who is, been, who is the incumbent, has been here for 30 years. Mm. This, the way we look at his pro promises should not be the same way we look at the promises of others. So there's a the question of, so far, in the promises you've been making over the last 25 years and so on, the last election, can we do an audit? Mm -hmm. There's, uh, there's a the contestation. Mm. The NRM, the president, believes he has delivered mm -hmm. to the people out there. Do they see that, indeed... The things that were promised the last time around have been... Uganda because there's a contestation on that. Then secondly, and I heard the president has been very disturbed about this, the promises especially by the FDC, the, 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 FDC, the, the candidate of FDC, the, mm. the one of the... Paying teachers. Paying teachers. Because it's, well, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vote winner. Mm -hmm. The teaching constituency in this country is big. Mm. She takes teachers, and retired teachers, and their years. children, and, they, and so on. So... The president has been saying these mm -hmm. people are liars. Mm. They are making promises that they, they can't cannot, deliver on. The, the, the economics of it do not add up. So I think we should also be asking Charles, are these promises. Uh, just, just, a moment. Just, a moment, just a moment, Honor. You, yes. uh, uh, just build your point. Yes. Are the promises the candidates making, are they feasible? Are they realistic? The NRM candidate has been making these promises and has, has had power and resources. He never tires to tell us that the envelope we are dealing with. It's huge. It's huge. Okay? Has he been, has the, the NRM government fulfilled the promises made over the last five years so that we can start a new set of, of promises? Because mm -hmm. otherwise you can have a Shall president, an incumbent campaigning like, is an opposition candidate. Mm. He's also uh, and the, therefore uh, issues, bread and butter issues, get lost in the middle. Yes. Mm. To, to mm. me, I think the viewers of NTV, what you should look at most now, look at 2011, the promises for NRM. Go to 206. Go to 201 and see. If they have been done well, vote for them. 
But to me, even if you give them a thousand years, I'll give you an example. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Who do you give those five years, I, I, even before you go to the one thousand? Mm. I, I, I mean, looking because you have, the candidates have been speaking. Mm -hmm. um, ben Oliveraro is speaking on the platform of the farmers. Yes, he's a farmers presidential candidate. Yes, and he thinks farmers will deliver him to state house. Yes, Yoweri Museveni is a candidate of peasants. Now, the other day, he was trying to appeal to that young population. Mm -hmm. He's a message you have described him. <laughs> he's a candidate of of the, the have nots. Eh? The have nots of and the he's been trying to yes, he's, he's been trying to mobilize them. But mm. when you listen to him more critically, mm. when you go beyond the excitement, mm. each of these candidates have a few fundamental issues that they're talking about mm. that actually can deliver something at the end of the day. Mm. A man whom people are not talking about, he's been running actually this is the third time. Bwanika. He's a dead Bwanika. Yes. He's run three times. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks it's only best you has run four times. But a dead Bwanika has been on the campaign There's no trade. crime yes, running. There's, no, there's, there's no crime years. in that. Mm -hmm. They are raising certain issues. Mm -hmm. If the voters are going to make decisions mm -hmm. beyond the t-shirts, beyond the drinks and the excitement that and comes with meat. campaigns and the meat and, and monies that are supposed to go there, the fourth estate is expected to help guide them. Mm -hmm. So, my question is, who of these candidates? Where, 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 where is the place? <coughs> First of all, <coughs> President Seven and all the other candidates have been parts and parcel of the NRM in one way or the other. And mm -hmm. to their credit, they have delivered the necessary micro and uh, macro environment and the necessary superstructure for you to have the deliver that they are all claim they are going to do. But unfortunately, they and the whole system of government as you have it will not deliver. I would want all these people to even be in government with all the ambition and the energy they have, but reduce themselves to a supervisory role of political watchdogs of a system that is devoid of politics, but that is populated by people who are competent and who can be hired and fired. At a price. Do you see that happening? You yes. want to the it's not going to happen. That's why, for me, mm -hmm. in many respects, I'm mm -hmm. willing to put my money on the table that none of these people is going to change the situation. You, 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 you will not because they lack the intention to do it, but they still want to perpetuate a system of delivery no, no, which no, has no. failed. No, you were you were in the campaign trail in 2011, weren't you? Yes. Yes. I was. And I I remember one of the major issues <laughs> that was running from the campaign trail was what pictures of the president have been run. <laughs> no, no, no. That has been sorted out now. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Ofono Pondo wrote again. We talked about him last week. He, he's mm. written again, uh, criticizing the media for not doing enough. Is for me, no, 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 for me, Frank. For, for, for what I don't history. like to be yeah? to, for to engage in yeah. today is to maintain, if you have something which has not worked for 30, 50 years, uh -huh. you're a businessman. Mm -hmm. How can you maintain that approach to running a but business? To me, Even if the alternative they are fails, they are, you I agree with something you. totally they, new. They I agree with you. Hmm? Uh, uh, President Yoweri hmm? Museveni has been in power for hmm? 30 years with uh, John Patrick Amama and Babas. Hmm. Dr. Kiza Vaisige parted, I think, in 2000. Hmm. Hmm. There's, a, there's a big gap, 15 years. Hmm. So don't tell me that if Obesity took over power, he's going to run this country the way the way NRM is running it now. I guarantee you, no way. will. Mm. No way. See, no way, it can't be. Yes, <laughs> just make a quick comment. And, and, uh, by the way, and something you talked about, mm -hmm. promises. I've mm -hmm. been thinking that there is no way you can raise money and pay teachers well. My God, if Ugandans knew billions that are being stolen every day. Charles. You know it's better than I do. <laughs> well, I hear you. 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 I hear when people begin saying, that's outlandish, the <laughs> sure. person who is making that. No, I, I, Peter, I'm afraid we need to take a break. Let's, let me pick it up with you okay. after a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome to this last segment of the Fourth Estate. We're discussing, will issues, bread and butter issues, dominate the 2016 election? Uh, Peter, I, I, I said I would give you an opportunity to make your point in response to honor. But when we come out to that, <laughs> can we also try and go into the mind of the voter? <clears throat> What is it that actually motivates the Ugandan voter mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. their decision? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Very quickly, Ona's ideas are good, and I would, I would buy into them. 
But unfortunately, for the, for, the, for the voters, the average voter we are talking about, we start of talking of abolishing government and so on, we, get, we end up confusing the voter more. Uh. I think <laughs> the, the contestation right, right now, and over the years, between especially as I say, candidate Besigi and the, the, the incumbent pre president, has been over, mm -hmm. that even with what Ona says is a wrong mechanism, that this wrong mechanism, what Ona calls the wrong mechanism, you have ha mishandled it. You've handled it badly. Give me a chance, I can handle it better. I think at that level, the people may understand it. Mm. Thank you. But to, to say we, 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 we abolish government, we go totally private, is a, is a bit uh, an idea that whose time has not come no, in, I, in our setting. Thank you. And se secondly, uh -huh. it's actually possible, and we have examples. The examples mm. are, every time you throw an example around, there will be contestation. Mm. Ethiopia, is it working? Are they working? Is it a state-led? I saw the other day they have a, a train. They, 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 they manufacture or they assemble vehicles. They, they are trying choppers and so on. I see Rwanda, a contested example. But I've been to Rwanda. I see order when you go to Rwanda, the neatness, the, mm. the orderliness. You, you sense mm. government. <laughs> Things actually working. Mm. And the Kagame was here. So if some, some people are like you, you see a police. That is our yes. forces. We should rather have you, a remember, you the can't. I had the writer that you, you don't abolish the armed forces. So if you keep yes. order, that's just yes. having good armed forces. You see, <laughs> it's, you see a semblance of an orderly mm. system, okay. which you don't find here. So it's possible mm. to reform. The, the system, it's about taking the, the hard decisions, okay, that we need to lead these so people. Do, do, do you yeah. see in the manifestos, do you see in the speeches of the president, someone who is going to make those hard decisions? Yes, I, again, the, 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 the president, the NRM candidate, for instance, I don't think he can be a reformer after 30 years. But he, he has a track the, record he's been running on, he yeah. says... Said the progress. I think the hashtag, yes. the it's, training it's hashtag, is said the progress. So if we easy. wanted to, if we wanted to, to make the hard decisions, I don't think candidate Yorim Seven or the NRM are the ones going to make. For them, it is status quo. Stay the road, uh, infrastructure, the, the things they, they emphasize, and so on. So you saw what happened in, in Kenya after 24 years of Moi, Moi back 10 years. You shake up the system a bit. You bring some. So yeah, it's possible, key, yeah. and it's begin, fun begin functioning. <coughs> and then, and then again, Na Na Nairobi has been going through yes, the. I, I think a world record traffic jam for that so run for three days. For, for three days, I don't know. <coughs> and they have expanded yeah. their road. They, they've, exp they, they've been expanding. I think that's on the Mombasa road. Ona, your voters in Amuria, mm. the ordinary people in Asalatap, mm. what takes them to this vote? And, and if they mm. listen to you, because I know uh, we have mm. a lot of people listening to us in, in Soroti, in Amuria, in those trading centers, in Ingariam, they are, they are, they are watching us. Mm. And they are waiting to hear what you say and how they make their decision. I, I, I don't I'm, know. I'm sure when yes. they listen, they are just asking, when will he run? <laughs> 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 With his private sector. <laughs> but look, most seriously, we have a political history that has shaped the thinking of the voters. This country underwent through, I mean, <laughs> underwent a lot of um, political turmoil, wars, and President Museveni's claim to fame in this country will always be around that political history of the country that has been a stabilizing factor. But it's fading And look, now. look, mm -hmm. and actually if you remove the inefficiency of the governance which I've condemned in terms of delivery, he remains still someone who could guarantee the the environment for people to to prosper. Well, but, had, but President Seven has had been around three years when the Berlin Wall crumbled, so, so, and so, you can't so, tell the Lord, people of so East so Germany that, 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 that because so there was a lot of trouble before the political then, before decisions yeah. most voters make. Let's say in the political South, where the the previous governments were seen as the enemy in quotes, if you want to put it, President Seven always came as someone who guaranteed them their peace and their development, they think they are witness. So that will always remain a big factor. And of course, Mbaba as he comes in, I think why the president is, is, can't be worried about Mbaba is that he also seems to guarantee the same continuity, mm -hmm. especially in the political mm -hmm. south, since they have been partners, and he can also position himself as a, just a change of faces, but not a change of the dynamics. Mm. But, but <coughs> most people... Not a maintain of status quo? Yeah, I mean, there's a because, because I think, um, in a way. People like you and mm. myself and the others mm. uh, who are 
working hard to change their lives, mm. who actually travel mm. and see that it is possible to transform. I, I, I like Endeavor, so he gave uh, an example of uh, people keep talking about transformation. Mm. And he said, you can feed a caterpillar well. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't transform, for a caterpillar to transform, mm -hmm. instead of fattening, mm -hmm it has to become a butterfly. Yes. And when it becomes a butterfly, it has completed the transformation, yes. it cannot go back yes. into the stage of a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. So if people have been talking about transformation, Prosperity. but talk about transformation and say, now we have more cars, second-hand Japanese cars on the street, so we and have the traffic road? jam, on, and we have expanded the roads. You have fattened the caterpillar, mm -hmm. you have not led to transformation. Mm -hmm. The question is, your voters in Masaka, mm around Luengo, around Sembabuli, mm. around Impiji, mm. when they go to make a choice yes. in February, mm -hmm. they are listening to the candidates now. Mm -hmm. They are asking for handholds. No, Do they... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people in Masaka can ask for holes now. No, no. The question is, mm. the mind of the voter, mm. are they asking these critical questions? Do they matter to them? Or they are so disenfranchised or disempowered that anything goes or status quo maintenance is what they think is the most important thing. Uh, Charles, let me, the truth of the matter is that uh, ordinary people have given up. Mm -hmm. They look at politicians, they look at the president as another qualified liar. They don't still believe in them. But something that, that I, want, I want to tell my brother or not, it's very simple. You say that Ugandans look at President Yorim Seven like uh, that is the factor in what's happening in Uganda. But you are forgetting that uh, Anyone born beyond 1986, he's a voter now. They, you won't even tell them about Rue. They don't even know their trustees committed. Though, though for me, I don't believe that they were trustees committed by the UPC. They were not there, to me. It's like in the US during the Barack Obama 2008 elections. People looked at Barack Obama, whites of the new generation do not look at how can a black man lead, be the president of Uganda. So, taking you to my point, people in Masaka believe that in Uganda, between the President Yoweri Museveni, Dr. Kiza Vesij, and Amama Mbavaz. Mm -hmm. And Beno Nivirao. And Beno Nivirao. Beno Nivirao. And Ambed Wanika. It can't happen now. <coughs> and Maureen Chaya. Unless there is witchcraft. <laughs> it can't happen. <laughs> and those of my views. It can't happen. Yes, Let me, the race is between three people. <laughs> Dr. Kiza Vesij, Amama Mbavaz, and President Yoweri Museveni. Mm. But something Ugandans always forget, and this is an opportunity for me to say this on NTV. President Kagame of Rwanda, mm. he was here as the deputy director of CMI. Meaning if Rwandese are not launched a war on Abi Arimana, Kagame would have been in Uganda, would have lost the president. So there are many. Basically, can be a good president for this country? Because he was there, he was there with them, and he parted with them. Mm -hmm. He did, from 2001, he has been the struggle to liberate Ugandans. So to me, my brother, on a, basically, we can get a president in Uganda who can pay teachers well, who can make sure that hospitals function, who can make sure that... We need how? To the question is how? Yes. From what he has presented, mm. you're not answering the how. I, I'm, I'm coming. People can make promises. I'm, I'm coming. That's one thing. But to deliver on those promises, and most importantly, your people in Masaka, mm. to retain the power, to demand that the candidates or the people they elect into leadership mm. actually deliver on the promises they make, mm -hmm. are two different things. He, he said it that uh, in the private sector there is high and fire. It can happen here. Mm. Can the people of Masaka high and fire? Why not? Have they demonstrated that? In UK, you are going to sit in, tw in 2016 elections. <coughs> and it has started. Well, best year was in Masaka in, in 2006. No, 2001, I think, and 2006. He said, <laughs> But you've not had, doctor, you've not had yeah. General Tinya Fusa, what he has been saying, that the money has been winning elections. Mm. There's a big mm. difference between winning an election and announcing you as the president. Okay. Jabweli. Yes. The mind of the voter. Yes. Because these same Ugandans mm. are going to go and make a decision. There are two fundamental issues that I see that never get thoroughly discussed. One is that you have a very high number of people who stay away from the vote. They think mm -hmm. that by staying away, they are not contributing to the final outcome, which actually I think, in my opinion, is um, a, 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 a lie someone tells themselves. Because if you, you make a choice whether you go and vote or if you don't vote, you actually you make a better choice, two of bad choices. You'd rather vote for a bad leader but know that you have the powers to recall them, to fire them when you need to, than not make a decision at all. Now, are these Ugandan people uh, who are going, when they go into your Ugandan in Tororo, for example, when they go to the vote, 
like they have done in the NRM primaries, have done elsewhere, to put to show that there is some power within their vote, that they can hold their leaders to account, but that they are going on the campaign trail to demand for right answers from their leaders that affect them, not in a way that just lifts them slightly, but in a way that actually can lead to their transformation. Unfortunately, Charles, we cannot sit here and predict and read into the mind of the voter. I personally feel the election will bring will spring some unexpected uh, the pointers the, the, the pointers coming out from the, the countryside point to a possible result that none of us here can expect. Uh, one because of the sheer numbers of young people. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we registered people the, 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 the national <coughs> voter ID we registered even people who are, who are sixteen. Mm. Okay, I have a daughter who is just finished, and uh, is also going to be a, a, a voter. Mm. With the national okay. ID, she just finished what level? Essex. Essex. Yes, and she's going to be a voter. She's, she's, she's a voter. eighteen. She's eighteen. Eighteen. Mm. Okay, uh, there are so many of that number of people, that mm. kind of uh, the, uh, the age group. We can sit here and forever and talk about it. We don't know exactly what is going to drive them, and mm -hmm. they are going to be the. The, the majority of voters. Otherwise, you can can, you can, can quickly root. But of course, you are in the can, EC, can, can, and you can, can you can, can, can also numbers? predict. Yes. 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 Can the, we look at the, the previous election? We've yes. had uh, the, from the previous if, election. If, if you looked at 2001, 2006, 2011, yes. Uganda over those years has been one of uh, the countries globally with the youngest population. Yes. yes. So the growth in numbers of young people. Mm -hmm. is not a strange phenomenon mm -hmm. happening between 2011 and 2016. Mm -hmm. yes. You see. And that ties into the, the question you said, the, 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 in, the, in the previous election, the numbers of people who would stay away, mm. those who stay away, I don't know what was the percentage, but they, they were, the, the majority. Uh, would, I can would, give you some numbers. Would, would, would stay Na away. 1996, of yes. registered voters, yes. we had a turnout of 72% of registered voters. Mm -hmm. yes. But you remember that in 1996, we had a lot of people who did not bother to get registered. Yes. To, to register. But that was the first election, so there was a little bit more excitement, mm -hmm. more people registered. Mm. 2001, the number grew to 70% of registered voters. Mm -hmm. But 2001, unlike, unlike 1996, had more people staying away, just ignoring the election, mm -hmm. and not getting registered. 2006, that number dropped by 10% to 69%. In uh, 2011, the last election, we had the, ha the lowest number Turning. of registered voters mm -hmm. turning up at 59%. E exactly. Yes. The question is, why do they st choose to stay away? With the kind of campaigns I'm now seeing with all the, the activism on shoto, shoto, social media and so on, and the candidates trying to go deeper to reach out to the people, I predict that the, the, the turnout is likely to be high. Mm. Uh, previously, the elections were characterized no. by violence to me, I, I, and I uh, agree with you things there. like that dis discourage a few people. And there was always the, the question of the invisibility of, of the incumbent. Mm. With more years going on, People begin to be get a, a belief. I see from the the, the rallies the, 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 that it might be possible. To, to me, to me, is, is the, the invisibility of President Museveni. You, you say now it's beginning to win. On this share the same opinion. Yeah, you had the, you had him at the press Look, conference the other I, I day. I think in, this, in, this in, election. You had him in, in hmm. Arua is for the very first time. Hmm. He, he was able to say, even in in coach language, to say, if he's defeated, he'll go home. He'll hand over power. Hmm. In '96, short after this election, he said. Even, Even if, if we, they had they defeated, had been defeated him. he would not hand over so power. People he defeated. There is <laughs> a sense in which those <laughs> who want to, to see change begin to say that maybe, and that is a mobilizing well, factor. I have, of course, I have, I have, of course for, only, the, for the camp of the president, there are also those who, who believe in, he, in in his charisma and in the continuity and so on. So, so those ones also. The things that informs them, they're old women, they're old people in this town. And mm -hmm. Like you told, and like told us, this, this, this father. Oh, yeah. Charles, yes. I, I think like, uh, like all great leaders or strong leaders in history, President Museveni, if he were to be defeated in this election, it would be really an act of uh, history that nobody has anticipated. And maybe it will not come out of the bread and butter issues, because nothing has changed and none of the candidates. People seriously, I don't think they believe any of those guys is going to change the bread and butter issues. Mm. So, but looking at this as it is right now, I think there are two main factors that could affect. Basically, seems to be gaining some sort of accumulated sympathy 
feeling. I can't say sympathy voters yet, mm -hmm. but maybe a lot of guys are seeing him as someone who has been battered, who has suffered, On their and, behalf. and voters have a tendency at some moment to say, ah, this one has suffered. Mm. At all levels of elections, mm. MP, they can just decide to give, not because of what he's saying or what they believe the person can necessarily do. So if that element catches for, for Besige, he may surprisingly <laughs> do better than um. he has done before. And then the unknown quantity is really in Babazi. He's mm -hmm. launched his manifesto, he has had a swing in central, a bit of the west. I think it's too early to say whether he's truly catching fire, but if he continues to catch, if he catches fire at mm -hmm. all, the, the, what he brings on the table is really trying to, to give an option to people who want the status quo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. He becomes an option to the president. So some people may say, okay, this is really, did will you, I lose my okay. job yeah, if I'm in some position in government, if I'm a big businessman, yeah, am I in danger of losing uh, my that, business? Gentlemen, we need so to be getting out of here. Say, let, me, let me just ask on one last question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know this is an issue we'll continue discussing until the vote is cast yeah. on uh, February 18th. Mm. Um, the other candidates, Vanantius Variamreva is a new player, mm. Ben Onoverara is a new player, mm. Maureen Chalia and uh, Mavi are uh, new players, they're running a joint ticket, a, a joint campaign rather, you have um, Abed Wanika. Will they impact this election in any No, and, and in way? many respects, I really sort of sympathize with them. And maybe they need to start urging for what is the place of a consistent, <laughs> also run like Abed Wanika in the <laughs> politics of Uganda. Maybe the constitution needs to provide for a man like that one to get to parliament. <laughs> even a man like that, but he has a national But also, look, should have a seat. I think it also says one thing, how much the NRM, to its credit, has actually held the thinking and the politics of Uganda over the last 30 years. That if you are not seen as someone who has been a strong player in the NRM, like uh, Besige, like in Babazi at some point, you kind of sort of don't give you a chance. Mm. They don't give you a chance. Well, they don't believe you have connections with the army, they don't believe you have money. So they don't give you a chance. Well, well, I think it happens everywhere. <laughs> We've been watching closely the American elections, mm -hmm. and um, the, the mm -hmm. voters can write off someone yes. even before they start the campaign. Yes. I, I think Bush, in, <laughs> Jeb Bush, is, is in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank, you'll have the last word because we're getting out uh, of here. To me, mm -hmm. my last shot would be very simple. Dr. Kiza Besiji and Johnny Patrick and Mama Mbabas, their message should rotate on hope so that they make sure that these voters that have not been turning up for, for elections turn up and vote for them. Mm. If they do, we are, we are going to say rerun. If they do show up and vote. Mm. That's what Obama did in 2008. He made sure that people that were not voting before turned up to vote. Mm. So the message for Johnny Patrick and Mama Mbabas, for Dr. Kiza Besiji, should resonate on hope. Please. How about, that the same how about the message for President Who? Seven? Who? What is the message for President, 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 President Seven? Who is the message for President Seven? We are full of hope. Retire, <laughs> retire, retire. That's it. Our time retire. is out, gentlemen. Thank you, <laughs> <from time>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Frank Gashumba, for the time for the show. Thank you very much. Peter Okello, Jabwele, thank you very much. Honor Peter Komoloi. Thank you very much to all our viewers for joining us tonight. The analysis on the Amama Mbabazi manifesto will continue. Uh, NTV brought it to you, a uh, bit of it live, and uh, the analysis in the news <laughs> will continue to cover. Uh, all the candidates on the trail as they come and uh, we wish Ugandans a very happy receiving of uh, Pope Francis when he makes uh, his uh, way to Kampala when he journeys to Kampala uh, later this week. Have a good night.